Welcome. My name is Angela Westhoff Johnson, and I am the Director of Product Development at OCP. I am also the Director of Music at St. Mary's Cathedral here in Portland. We are here at the OCP recording studio, Thelma's, where countless recordings have been conceived and created. But today we are here to celebrate the 100th Choral Packet, this three times a year collection of music for you to consider and evaluate for inclusion in your own repertoire. The process of publishing a choral work is an extraordinary endeavor with review, acceptance, development, editorial, engraving, recording, and marketing to ultimately make the music, both printed and recorded, available to each of you. Prior to all of this is the impulse and spark from the composer who is inspired to elevate scripture, animate singers and conductors, and hopefully the congregation in the veneration and praise of God. I saw an interview with the great British composer, arranger, and conductor John Rutter titled The Importance of Choir, and I quote, Choral music is not one of life's thrills. It's something that goes beyond to the very heart of our humanity, our sense of community and our souls. You express when you sing your soul in song. And when you get together with a group of other singers, it becomes more than the sum of the parts. All of those people are pouring out their hearts and souls in perfect harmony which is kind of an emblem for what we need in this world when so much of the world is at odds with itself, that just to express in symbolic terms what it's like when human beings are in harmony. That's a lesson for our times and for all times. He later said, a church without a choir is like a body without a soul. In Sing to the Lord, the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops remind us that God has bestowed upon his people the gift of song. God dwells within each human person in the place where music takes its source. Indeed, God, the giver of song, is present whenever his people sing his praises. We would like to share and reminisce and reveal some highlights and insights of our experiences as well as celebrate this achievement of 100 choral packets. So now I'd like to introduce Kevin Walsh. Kevin's a former employee at OCP, longtime employee, executive producer of recordings at OCP. And Kevin had the privilege of like working on all the choral packets. So it's, it's interesting that we reached out to Kevin in his retirement. Kevin probably thought, I'm not, I want to retire here to write an article for us on the history of the choral packet. So as you were doing that research, tell me some things that surprised you. Well, the interesting thing is, as I was writing it, this is my life's work, really. And, and so when, we, when I started at OCP, there were three octavos and we had five collections, five or six collections of choral descants written by Randy DeBrine, mm -hmm. but that was really all I the still have those. choral music mm -hmm. that we had. And those of us who were on the team at OCP wanted to push and develop more choral music, but we had all this choral music and no way to really get it to mm -hmm. our customers. Mm -hmm. So I started in 85, and I think our first choral packet was in 89. Mm -hmm. So uh, by then we had a lot of choral music and I looked, I, I was going through all the titles from all hundred choral packets. And it was fascinating to me because as I look back on those, I remember those recording sessions. I remember where we would talk about the text and that is everything. The music is important, but the text is what's most important. Mm -hmm. And in all of my sessions with the choir, I would drill down the text. Mm -hmm. I would talk to them, what is important to you? What does this mean? Read this refrain mm -hmm. with me. Think about 
whatever. If we were doing a, a song about, about funerals, I would ask them to think about the most recent death they had had in their family or among their friends. Mm -hmm. And think about them when you're singing this text, because that is everything with liturgical music. Yeah. And so, so it was, it was, it was a, a great um, gift to me to work at OCP and to be able to work with these great musicians mm -hmm. and great singers. And, and uh, I mean, uh, the first couple of uh, recording projects that I did were down in Los Angeles with uh, Frank Brownstead, and, and Frank was wonderful about doing that sort of thing, and I sort of cut my teeth with, teeth with him. And then we eventually brought the recordings up here to Portland, where we had great musicians and, and uh, vocalists, and, and uh, we sort of, I got to work with musicians from actually across the country and across the world. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, I think the first choral packets were smaller, weren't oh, they? Oh yeah, absolutely, like absolutely. Fifteen songs, or yes, they were smaller. And and then as we ended up with more choral music, I think we ended up aiming for about twenty-five mm -hmm. per packet. Yep. And at one time we had uh, uh, we were doing four choral packets a year, like we had fall, winter, spring, and summer, and we that was too many mm -hmm. uh, because a choir director can only absorb so exactly. much and they only have so much money to spend and we we wanted to we were overwhelming them so we cut it down to three uh coral packets and and uh it ended up being like fall winter and spring summer mm -hmm. and so then, you mentioned some composers so just tell me a few of the highlights composers from the early days sure <laughs> Sure, uh, I I got to work with Dan Schutte and Bob Hurd and Chris Walker from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And the thing that is great about these composers is they have a great love of scripture mm -hmm. and, and liturgy. Each one of them is, they're brilliant liturgists and they're poets. And so again, it's about the text and, and uh, Dan Schutte, he, he crafts beautiful texts. And I can't tell you how many times we would go through a music review and then when we get into the recording session, he would say, I want to change that word. And then I would have to keep track of that to get it back into the print. Um, Bob heard similar and, and same with Chris Walker. And, and the, the music was about serving the liturgy. It was because they each knew what was important in, in these different moments in the liturgy. And Dan Schutte has a collection that was wonderful for Lent called Glory in the Cross. Bob Hurd had, um, uh, a, a, I think there's four, uh, four or five CDs of a, a contem contemplative rosary. Oh, it was so beautiful. Totally beautiful. And, and something that is, can take a, a prayer that is in, in its nature uh, repetitive and sometimes monotonous, and turn it into something that was beautiful. And mm -hmm. I remember the first time I did it, I thought, wow, this yeah, is great. Yeah, it's gorgeous. You and know, I have to say this. When I first started at OCP in 1996, I think, uh, doesn't seem possible. But I remember your first day. I do too, Kevin. It was you and I were, I, you sat in my little cubicle and chatted with me, and thank you for keeping me at OCP all these years. Um, I remember the first octavo I edited was Chris Walker's, and he came up to do a recording session. And I don't know if I, I may have been singing in that session, and the next morning he came into the office and said, I wrote a trumpet part, we have to get that in there. I thought, oh my goodness, really? So you're right, that does happen, doesn't it? I wrote it for the recording session, and now I want it in the octavo, which was like going to production. So, um, wow, <laughs> those we days. Were doing, we were doing a recording session down in Los Angeles, and, and I was just checking in with Chris like half an hour before we were to start. And I said, what you doing? He said, I'm writing the, the, uh, the SATB for the refrain of, which we were recording that night. I said, I'll leave you alone. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, it, it was that creativity that was mm -hmm. so exciting uh, when working with Chris. And, and I, I want to talk about one, every recording that I did had choral songs that ended up going onto the choral packets. Yeah. Not all of them, but each, each one had some. So, so uh, I can't separate 
the different recording projects right. that I did from the Coral Packet. But I want to talk about one particular experience. On September 11th, uh, 2001, a day that we all remember, uh, Chris Walker mm -hmm. came to OCP and we were all stunned and uh, devastated by the horror that we were watching on TV. And we had a session that night and I, I thought, should we do it? Shouldn't we do it? And we decided to go ahead and do it. And it was the smartest move because again, we talked about the text. And I can't remember which songs we recorded. It was Christ We Proclaim. Oh. We were working on that project. Well, it was so moving to me. And we helped each other by focusing on something that was bigger than us. And, and uh, you know, our experience of God in our lives. And it was, it, it, we helped each other. And that's the beauty of choral music, working together to create a thing of beauty. I'll never forget Bernadette being here, working with her, and you were producing this, and we were at the cathedral, and um, we just weren't getting what she wanted. And she was in the sacristy, and we were chatting, and she was sharing with me what, how, what, how the piece came about. And I said, after several takes, <laughs> I said, can you come out and tell the choir that? And she did. And there was not a dry eye in the space, and it was the next take. And so you taught me so much about it's the text, sing the text. Let's say it all together. What does that mean? And Kevin, you always will come out and talk about where it happens in the liturgy. Because so many of those professional singers, a lot of them were doing liturgy, but um, you explained it and they were picturing that in, in the sacred space. You were brilliant. Absolutely. I mean, for example, a simple, the exultant. When you talk about the exultant that's happening in front of the, the, the fire and the, the flames and then the dark church, you capture that moment. The same thing with a, a song of farewell that you're doing mm -hmm. or a baptism or a, a, a blessing for a wedding. That context is everything. Mm -hmm. It's everything. And uh, uh, that's, that is holiness. It really is, and and uh, I've I loved every project that I did, every composer that I worked. Some were were uh, it had their own challenges, but ultimately it got down to the text and the yeah. music. Okay, challenges. That that's a good m moment to speak about. I, I will never forget. I was conducting. You were producing. And the score, because we know that composers can sometimes change things in the score after a point at which they shouldn't be maybe doing that. And we get to the session and there are maybe 24, 20, 32, I don't know how many singers were there. And something was not working in the score. And I was like, okay, what? And everybody's raising their hand and trying to figure it out. And I said, I had to, mm, and the score was off. It had moved by a measure or two. And it was some, do you remember this? I do. And um, one of the singers in the group came over and he had kind of gone to the side and was looking at the score. And he ended up coming over and saying, can I just talk to you for a second? Didn't say it in front of the whole group. And he said, I think what happened was everything shifted. Boom, that was it. Ironically, that singer became an editor a couple of years later. Yeah. So I'll never forget that. But Kevin, in all of his calmness, you were just take a few minutes, singer, sit down. Let's keep it quiet in the space. You were always so kind because you could see sort of the frustration. This isn't working. And we got through it. Adaptability is everything. Mm -hmm. I got to a recording session down at Mount St. Mary's in, in Los Angeles, and they had the Santa Ana winds, which is that they blow amazingly. I mean, it's, it's strong winds. <laughs> and we're at Mount St. Mary's, which is this long, narrow church up on a hill, on, on the hill right next to the Getty Museum at, at uh, Mount St. Mary's College. Beautiful chapel. I walked in there. It sounded like a hurricane because the, the, they were blowing through. And I thought, oh my gosh, I have 
30 singers and instrumentalists on their way here, and they're gonna be here in an hour. What do I do? I can't cancel. So I thought, well, what, what do we do? So I decided to use that night to rehearse mm. everything. Mm -hmm. So we rehearsed everything in the midst of all the, the wind. <laughs> and the next, I prayed for the Santa Ana winds to stop and thank God somebody heard my prayers because we just whizzed through all those songs the next two nights. Yeah, that, that's a smart way to do it. Yeah. Tell me some other favorite songs over the years. And I know, Kevin, you worked so much on composer collections. And those were kind of the days when we would have a 12 to 14 songs in a composer collection. And you would have a composer in Portland for weeks. Oh, yeah. Weeks. And then we might take two or three of those songs and pull them out and put them into choral packets. So, they, like you say, they go together for you. But a highlight of a song that you thought, wow, the choral packet is shining because of this song. Sure. The first thing that comes to mind is Bernadette Farrell's Restless as the Heart. Oh. It's such a, a beautiful, restless as the heart until it comes to rest in you. All the earth shall remember and return to our God. Make us know our life's shortness. Make us low, know our life's shortness that we may gain true wisdom of heart. In the morning, Fill us with your love. Yeah. This is I never text. get tired of that song. I don't either. Yeah. I don't either. And that's the thing about Bernadette. Yeah. She doesn't put out a lot of music, but what she does put out are total gems. gems. Another uh, recording that we did, and I, I can never hear this song without uh, a catch in my heart, and that's, Oh God, You Search Me, mm -hmm. uh, and that's uh, Psalm uh, 139. And... It's Psalm 139, that in itself is enough to mm -hmm. move you. But at that particular, on that particular song, there's a horn part in verse two or verse three, I'm not sure which. And it's a haunting mm -hmm. horn part as they are. They are. And uh, the, the horn player was killed in a terrible car accident on the LA freeways on the way home from that. So that was the last piece he ever played. And so I cannot hear that without thinking about him. And it's, I get totally moved. Stunning. Another one that I want to talk about, and this is, was a, a, a fun piece that I brought to um, OCP. It was in manuscript form. It originally came from uh, St. Thomas Fifth Avenue. Uh, from a, a friend of, of mine, and it's a little piece, a little gem called Verbum Caro. And it's simple, it's beautiful, and any small choir can do it. I use it every year at Midnight yep. Mass as it's, we're processing in. It's a, it's a, that was one of our first Trinitas pieces. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a sweet little piece. It's lovely. It's lovely. And there are so many other, I mean, I could go on and on. There are so many other wonderful titles that, that uh, uh, is it uh, Gabriel's Message by Paul mm -hmm. Nicholson? That's a great Love one. That. Mm -hmm. Love that. Not an easy one, no, but a great arrangement. But it's something you could chew on and learn mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, you know, anyway, yeah, there's, there's uh, as I went through uh, trying to choose my favorite five octavos, I, I ended up out of all 100 packets, I had a list of 49 and I thought, oh my gosh. How do I get these whittled down? And so then I whittled them down to, I think I got it down to 12 titles. Yeah. The great thing about you, Kevin, and I mean this, Kevin and I were neighbors for a long time. So, um, with, and we were neighbors at work. So we shared a wall and Kevin would sometimes knock on the wall to me. But um, Kevin's a beautiful singer in addition to a wonderful um, director, how you work with people and engage with them, and my and children, because my own children would sing on recordings and how you worked with them, that's a gift. But Kevin now continues to um, make a difference on our choral packets, because you come in to the session and you, you, you know you're not in charge anymore, but you are so engaging and you set an example. And sometimes you've said to me, hey, did you, notice this but in such a way that I value very much and so it's great to have you continue in some way to impact our choral packets and thank you and I, I want to 
talk about that because when my twin brother and I were in theater, we started in a lot of choruses. So mm -hmm. we were in the choir and we, we watched the leads and we paid attention to the leads who knew our names because mm -hmm. that meant something mm -hmm. to a lowly chorus person. And I made a decision right then and there that that's the kind of person I was going to be. So I always try to learn everybody's name mm -hmm. because I want to contribute to the whole. And, uh, and so both Stephen and I did that and uh, it, was, it was great. The Catholic bishops again remind us that a cry from deep within our being Music is a way for God to lead us to the realm of higher things. As St. Augustine says, singing is for the one who loves. Music is therefore a sign of God's love for us and of our love for him. In this sense, it is very personal. But unless music sounds, it is not music. And whenever it sounds, it is accessible to others. By its very nature, song has both an individual and a communal dimension. Thus, it is no wonder that singing together in church expresses so well the sacramental presence of God to his people. OCP's mission is to help people encounter God and his love. It is our hope that music can elevate liturgy and make these encounters possible. I wish to thank all of my esteemed colleagues for this conversation and reminiscing today. For those of you watching this, thank you. Thank you for spending this time with us to share music that can unite and inspire and heal. Music that will change your worship experience. From all of us at OCP, may you be blessed in your ministry. Real.